step pyramids were the favorite architectural forms of these ancient builders, it seems apparent that they were created by the same advanced civilization. However, these temples are in totally different parts of the planet. This Chichen Itza complex is located in Mexico, the Pyramid of Djoser is in Egypt, and the Koh Kher Sanctuary was discovered in Cambodia. Textbooks will tell you that all these very similar step pyramids were built by different primitive societies independently of one another. But the weirdest thing is that these almost identical structures are separated by hundreds or even thousands of years and a distance of half the world. And if we assume that they were really created by representatives of the same ancient advanced civilization who could easily cross the oceans, that's the development level close to the 20th century. Scientists have found even too many suspicious buildings, the appearance of which they can't fully explain, or don't even try. In the U.S. state of Ohio, there's such a strange human-made hill. It's called the Great Serpent Mound. Experts are still arguing about the age of the complex stretching for 440 meters. The generally accepted version states that the snake-shaped mound was built by representatives of the four ancient culture around the year 1000 CE. Allegedly, there was just no one else who could do it. However, this version hasn't convinced everyone. British journalist Graham Hancock doubted such conclusions and decided to conduct an alternative study. Not far from the Serpent Mound, he came across a whole complex of ancient burials related to the Adena culture, which is one and a half thousand years older than Fort Ancient. But the most incredible thing is that the Serpent Mound apparently rests on the ridge of an ancient meteorite impact crater. The tested samples showed that this collision occurred no earlier than 125,000 years ago, leaving behind a powerful magnetic anomaly. Compass needles literally go wild in this area. Surveyors were able to accurately determine the cardinal points on the Serpent Mound only a hundred years ago, while ancient people did it a couple of thousand years earlier without special equipment. They managed to do even more. The head of the serpent aligns with the summer solstice sunset, and the curves of the mound serve as an astronomical calendar. And according to the conventional version, all this was built by people who could only build huts and sharpen spears for hunting. But what if this primitive society just occupied the more ancient complex built by someone else much earlier? Especially considering the fact that in another corner of the world, we found traces of an unknown ancient civilization with extraordinary construction skills. Scientists initially paid little attention to the half-ruined Gobekli Tepe temple complex in Turkey. The first study showed that it was built only about 2,000 years ago. Gobekli Tepe would have remained interesting only to specialists if they hadn't discovered at least 16 more ancient underground halls during the final excavations. Hence, the total area of the complex could reach about 20 square kilometers, and that's only what we've managed to find. That's almost like half of Manhattan. The examination showed that the oldest of the halls date back to the 10th millennium BC, and that's even before the emergence of any modern civilization. Scientists believe that in those times, hunter-gatherers still flourished on Earth. What could make them suddenly unite to build the monumental Gobekli Tepe? Science has no clear explanation for that. There's no way our ancestors could receive the group text that ushered in a new era for humankind. Moreover, Giulio Magli, a professor at the Polytechnic University of Milan, discovered that Gobekli Tepe was not a temple, but a real observatory. 
That's because the middle lines between the central monoliths of the complex coincide with the azimuths of Sirius during the summer solstice. These unknown ancient people knew a lot about not only the technology of construction, but also astronomy. Then what could prevent them from traveling around the world? Ancient maps testify in favor of the version of an advanced ancient civilization that was actively exploring the globe. On the map of 1513, we can see Antarctica, but how did it get there if our seafarers discovered the fifth continent only 300 years later? The ancient map has some more mysteries. For example, the coastline of Antarctica, now hidden by the ice, is depicted with remarkable accuracy, as if someone knew what the continent looked like in the distant past. Modern science managed to study such details only in the 60s of the 20th century. But who could possibly beat us by hundreds or even thousands of years? Could it be the builders of a giant pyramid on Antarctica's surface? This is a fragment of a satellite image of the Ellsworth Mountains taken in 2016. Are these the remnants of the Antarctic metropolis of an ancient advanced civilization? The creator of the mysterious map, Sailor Peary Race, claimed that he had copied his sample from a very ancient document from the already destroyed Library of Alexandria. And by the way, this is in the vicinity of the Great Pyramids of Giza. What if the ancient builders left detailed instructions for the descendants, which were subsequently lost? But there's more to come. The outlines of 16th century South America, still poorly studied back then, are also strikingly accurate on the same map. Mountains, rivers, and some lakes are even marked on the continent itself. That is, in ancient times, someone not only saw this piece of land from the sea, but also managed to get deep into the continent. However, on the map of Piri Race, there are inconsistencies even with our current knowledge of the world. On it, South America is connected to Antarctica by a small isthmus. But wait, could it be that tens of thousands of years ago, in the days of an unknown ancient civilization, these continents were really connected? After all, in South America, we've also discovered many pyramids, and we keep finding new ones to this day. Quite recently, researchers scoured the area surrounding a village in southern Bolivia using LiDAR scanners. And all of a sudden, under the jungle cover, they discovered a complex network of canals and the remains of several stone pyramids. Archaeologists found out that they belonged to the previously unknown Casarabe culture, a thousand years older than the Aztecs and Incas. It seems as if someone specifically taught Native Americans complex architectural skills, and then they were adopted by later civilizations. However, geologists strongly dispute this theory about the pyramids in Antarctica. In their opinion, this is not the result of human activities, but of a very specific erosion, as in the case of the famous Alpine Matterhorn Mountain. But the debunking of only one pyramid does not change the fact that there are many ancient human-made monuments scattered around the world, and they are all suspiciously similar. Now, the ruins of the Gunung Padang Temple on one of the Indonesian islands no longer look so impressive. But in ancient times, it was a pyramid. Like the Great Serpent Mound, it also sits within an ancient crater. Scientists believe that the complex should be no older than 9,000 years. However, a recent radiocarbon analysis has shown that Gunung Padang's lower boundary date could push back the estimated date of construction by another 20,000 years. Scientists retort that back then, Earth experienced the most severe phase of the last glacial period. That's why people were clearly not up to creating enormous memorial complexes. But aren't we missing something important? Trying to fit Gunung Padang into our conventional history 
The Ice Age is not as scary for an advanced civilization as it is for hunter-gatherers. These people could continue to travel the world constructing their pyramids. After all, they were found not only in Egypt, but in all corners of the world. This is the Prasat Bakse Chum Krong Temple in Cambodia, and here's the Monte da Cody Sanctuary in northwest Sardinia, Italy. And all these buildings have striking similarities. The boulders of the construction in Argolis, Greece are joined so tightly that even a human hair can't squeeze through the joints, and all this is done without any fastening solutions. Near the city of Cusco in Peru, walls with similar masonry were found. Even though these regions are separated by over 11,000 kilometers and the Atlantic Ocean. Moreover, if we look at pyramid monuments in Egypt, Japan, and even on Easter Island, we'll see the same story. Even the sculptures of these complexes have something in common. Compare artifacts from Bolivia, Turkey, Indonesia, and Easter Island, which can't possibly be reached without a well-developed fleet. Is it entirely accidental that the ancient Aztecs had a legend about a god named Quetzalcoatl, who allegedly came from across the sea in a boat that moved by itself without paddles? According to legends, it was Quetzalcoatl who taught people unprecedented skills, including the construction of pyramids. But here comes another strange coincidence. This image of superhumans passing on their knowledge is found not only in Aztec culture. The ancient inhabitants of Mexico fixed this event into stone by depicting a person granting gifts of divine knowledge. It looks like an ordinary modern bag, doesn't it? But similar scenes of knowledge transmission by ancient sages are found all over the planet. They're discovered in the most hidden parts of Gobekli Tepe, on the walls of the preserved Assyrian temples, and even in Sumerian arts and crafts. But if we assume that representatives of an ancient civilization could easily cross the oceans and bestow knowledge on primitive people, this would mean that their level of development was close to our 20th centuries. Could such a society disappear almost without a trace? In a recent article in Scientific Reports, American scientists announced the results of long-term excavations near the town of Tel El Hammam in Jordan, a one-and-a-half-meter soil layer entirely consisting of burnt organic matter, ash, and bone fragments, suddenly turned out to be the site of an ancient space disaster. Around 1650 BC, this settlement was instantly destroyed by an explosion of a previously unknown meteorite. Scientists scrambled to find at least some mention of such a cataclysm, but they found only biblical legends about the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah literally by fire from the sky. So I guess myths are sometimes not really fiction. And although such a disaster wouldn't have been enough to wipe out an entire civilization, there is an ancient legend about a global catastrophe which may also prove to have some grounds. The myth of the Great Flood can be found not only in the Bible, but also in the tales of the indigenous peoples of America, and even in the legends of Australian Aborigines. The ancient Finns even associated this event with the end of the world. If the Flood was really so global, even an advanced ancient civilization would be in trouble. And some data indicate that approximately 13 to 15,000 years ago, our Earth experienced the so-called cataclysmic period. It's like all the storms on our planet were raging simultaneously. But what could have caused it? Soil samples of that period contain numerous nano-diamond deposits. These are microscopic crystals that are formed as a result of the powerful impacts of comets or asteroids. But if the flood was caused by the impact, where's the vortex? Richard Firestone, an analytical chemist at the Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory in California, 
found that most nano diamonds are found in soil samples from North America. But back then, the entire territory of modern Canada was covered with a thick ice crust. And if the comet hit it, the instantaneous melting of a tremendous amount of ice could create a devastating wave and, as a result, cause a global flood. However, it's not a sure fact that it could destroy an entire civilization at once. The few survivors could theoretically settle in different parts of the planet to try to revive the former greatness and at the same time transfer fragments of their knowledge to other more primitive civilizations. It's amazing, but judging by the dating, the survivors of the secret apocalypse could be the ones who built Gobekli Tempe. In the meantime, the rest of humanity was hunting and gathering, as they already had the necessary technology and knew how to cooperate well. But if such a monumental building was erected by people exhausted by disasters, what were they really capable of at the peak of their glory? And if they possessed high technology, why didn't we find it? Although we consider ourselves a rather advanced civilization, which certainly left its bright mark on the planet's history, in reality, we can greatly overestimate ourselves. If our civilization disappears right now, in 200 years, there won't be any traces of human-cultivated plants left on the planet. In 10,000 years, cities will almost completely disappear, except for the remaining large stones randomly scattered around the globe. And we've just found something similar. The Bimini Underwater Road near the Bahamas is referred to as the Road to Atlantis. It consists of 700 meters of neatly laid out limestone blocks. The true origin of the structure is still disputed. There's no single plausible explanation among scientists. But where could this enormous road lead? Could it be that in earlier times, before the Great Flood, the ocean level was significantly lower and the ancient civilization surrounded almost the entire planet with such highways? That doesn't sound crazy at all, given that it would be easy to get to most other continents from Antarctica, which hadn't been covered with ice yet, just like it's indicated on the ancient map. Maybe one day we'll find the ruins of entire metropolises under the ice. But if an unknown ancient civilization was so advanced, there is one problem. If we disappear, the glass and plastic from our buildings and machines will be decomposing for about 15 million years. And after only a few tens of thousands of years, we would have definitely found similar traces of the previous civilization. Or not. The source of all our plastic is crude oil. Ancient people could either have failed to find it at all or considered it useless. It's also possible that they managed to predict the harmful effect of synthetic materials on the planet and just abandon their production. In other words, such a civilization could be completely organic and therefore leave no trace. But the development level is determined not so much by technology as by the structure of society. And if the ancient sages didn't use plastics as we do, they could find alternative ways to organize their civilization. Despite our prejudices, ancient societies might not necessarily be primitive. This conclusion was reached by the American anthropologist David Graeber, who studied various alternative structures of ancient human societies. For example, in the early stages of the development of even our civilization, there could be tribes with a constant cyclical change of roles. Once every few months, slaves became chieftains and vice versa. In doing so, they could change not only personal belongings, but even names. After a while, everything was back to normal. Also, in his book, The Dawn of Everything, he describes the primitive tribes which consisted only of eccentric people who deliberately didn't observe any hierarchies. 
perhaps similar in same principles of social organization, helped an unknown ancient civilization to find alternative ways of development and develop much faster, even on the basis of technologies that seem organic and imperceptible to us today. Simply put, the issue may not be that a highly developed ancient civilization is so invisible. It's just that it's very difficult for us to see it with our prejudices. But one day, we may rise above them and find all the missing pieces of the mosaic of an ancient unknown civilization that has only left us hints. However, ancient people might not be all that different from us in some things. The Indian epic Mahabharata describes an explosion as bright as 10,000 suns, after which a huge column of smoke and fire arose and the birds fell dead to the ground. That sounds suspiciously like a nuclear explosion, doesn't it? I can't even imagine what it could look like. Do you think an advanced ancient civilization really existed?